Hey, welcome back to Laser Engraving 911. So on this episode, we're gonna get into the pros and cons of laser cleaning. We're gonna cover everything from hardware, settings, pitfalls, safety issues, what you can do with these laser cleaners and what you can't do with these laser cleaners. There is a lot of information and a lot of different machines out there. And I figured I'd narrow it all down for you so you could make the best decision if you're thinking about getting into the laser cleaning industry. So if that sounds like something you wanna get into, then buckle up, get your pen and paper out because we're about to get into some laser cleaning on Laser Engraving 911. All right, so before we jump into all these different areas of laser cleaning, I realized that not everyone might know what laser cleaning technology is. So in simple terms, laser cleaning technology uses a focused beam of light to remove contaminants from surfaces. Contaminants like rust, oil, dirt, paint, but it does it in a very precise way without harming the surface underneath. So from preparing metals for welding, restoring historical artifacts, removing varnishes from wood, removing rust, removing glue and other contaminants from molds, laser cleaning is changing the game in many different industries. So now that we've got that basic understanding of laser cleaning out of the way, why don't we dive into some key facts that you're going to want to know about this technology. All right, number one, laser cleaning is non-destructive, right? Well, that's true. Laser cleaning can safely remove all kinds of contaminants from all kinds of different surfaces, whether it's rust, oil, paint, varnish, glues, or other contaminants that you might find in an industrial space. Pulsed laser cleaners are especially well suited for this type of removal, which we'll talk about a little bit later. However, when you use the wrong type of laser or the wrong settings, you can definitely get yourself into some hot water. So that's why it's crucial that you pick the right type of unit for your application and you practice, practice, practice on your own material before taking on real life jobs. All right, number two, laser cleaning is environmentally friendly. <laughs> well, that's true. Laser cleaning is a green and sustainable option because it doesn't use chemicals or abrasives. Unlike sandblasting chemical or water-based cleaning methods, there's practically zero cleanup and zero chemical waste. However, environmentally friendly can be an overused term and a little bit misleading. You see, when you're actually using laser cleaning technology, there is a lot of fumes that are created and you need to plan for that. So consider, depending on your application, getting an industrial grade fume extractor to capture all those fumes or make sure that your ventilation is good or a very strong industrial fan to remove those fumes from the workplace. And always make sure you're wearing the proper PPE to protect your lungs when doing laser cleaning. All right, number three, precision cleaning. Yes, highly precise. Today's lasers offer a level of precision that is unparalleled compared to other cleaning methods. With these laser cleaners, you're able to shoot the laser into extremely hard to reach spots and uneven surfaces. But remember, precision is based on the user. So it's crucial that you take the time to understand your laser cleaner, how to keep it in focus, and how to properly sweep the beam back and forth so you can get amazing results when using this technology. And with time and skill, you can master this tool with consistent, effective cleaning results every single time. All right, number four, versatile applications. So laser cleaners work on many different surfaces, including stone, concrete, wood, metal, of course, lots of different types of metal, and many other materials. One important thing to remember is that not all laser cleaners are the same or the technology that goes inside. So the two different categories out there are continuous wave laser cleaning machines and pulsed laser cleaning machines. So the differences in the two types of laser cleaning machines are as follows. You've got the continuous wave type. 
So this I like to refer to as the jackhammer of laser cleaners. The continuous wave means that the laser beam has no pulsing action and it's just a solid stream of light at usually extremely high powers from 1500 watts all the way up to 3000 watts. It has very little control and its main purpose is to remove large areas of rusted metal, some stone and some other substrates, but because it doesn't have the ability to be fine tuned, it can really be brutal on surfaces when used improperly and it's not really designed for fine or controlled removal of contaminants on surfaces. That's where the pulse laser cleaner comes in. So the other type of laser is the pulsed laser cleaner. Now, these usually don't come in higher wattages like the continuous wave. However, they do have many more parameters that can be changed within the settings. So you've got everything from pulse width, you've got frequency, you've got a lot of different controls within the software and the way you can control that pulse laser, which allows you to do really cool stuff and really get precise with your cleaning. So that's the type of laser you would wanna use uh, if you're removing varnishes off wood, if you've got historic monuments that need to be laser cleaned or gravestones out in a graveyard, you would want to do highly controlled laser cleaning without damaging the substrate underneath. And that's not to say that you can't do that with continuous wave, you just need to be aware that each type of laser cleaning unit has a different purpose and has different controls and should be used for different applications. All right, number five, laser cleaners have minimal maintenance. Yes, because of their simple design, it's a solid state design with minimal moving parts, maintenance is very low. However, the maintenance that you do need to follow with these laser cleaning units is very important. So here's a few tips. First, you have to absolutely make sure that the optics are clean any kind of grease or dirt that gets on the optics can cause major problems, cause the lens to overheat and crack. So make sure you stay on top of that. Second, you wanna make sure that you handle the fiber optic cable or the whip that leads up to the handheld laser cleaning part with care. You don't want to have any sharp kinks in that or sharp bends, and you definitely don't wanna be stepping all over that cable when it's on the ground when you're working. As messing up the fiber optic cable or cracking it because it's glass could be a very costly mistake. And third, some laser cleaner units have a chiller, like mostly the continuous wave ones. You definitely wanna make sure that you keep the water topped up in that chiller to avoid overheating. And as long as you follow those minimal maintenance steps with all laser cleaners, it should keep it running smooth and in great shape for quite a long time. All right, number six, one laser cleaner to rule them all. Well. The truth is, is there's actually no such thing. Like we talked about before, there are different kinds of laser cleaning machines suited best for different applications. The continuous wave lasers are usually better suited for applications that don't require any kind of precision or any kind of fine removal. They're best suited for removing extremely large areas of rust on industrial equipment you've got really wide spaces and you want to get it done quickly, you're definitely going to want to pick the continuous wave type lasers. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, we have the pulse lasers, and those are usually best suited for precision work where care must be taken not to hurt the underlying substrate underneath the contaminants that are on the surface. The point that I'm trying to get across is that there is not one laser cleaning unit to rule them all. For best practices, if you're thinking about getting into the laser cleaning industry, you're going to want to have both kinds of lasers in your arsenal, especially if you want to be able to take on all the jobs and not just the small, fine precision work. You may get calls to remove large areas of rust or contaminants, and that's where you'll want to have both. I'll list links in the description of this video below on the two units that I recommend to anyone who's really serious about getting into this business. That way you can be fully prepared when you start laser cleaning.
All right, number seven, enhanced workplace safety. So while laser cleaning does eliminate the need for harsh chemicals and also the need to handle the thing that you're cleaning, there are also a lot of other things to consider like laser safety protocols. So these lasers are considered a class four laser, which means that they can cause serious damage to your skin, your eyes, and even pose a potential fire risk. Proper eye protection is crucial when operating these laser cleaners, and not just for you, but for anyone standing around the area that you're working as well. Did you know that it only takes 500 milliwatts of this type of laser light to damage your eye? And these machines actually operate typically at 100 watts up to 3000 watts. So just put that into perspective. So just keep in mind when you're operating a laser cleaner that you need to have proper PPE, you need to have proper eye protection, and you also need to stay up to date on proper laser safety protocols. The more education you can get on this, the better off you'll be. All right, number eight, let's talk about portability. So over the years, laser cleaning machines have become much more portable and mobile. And even though you will have to probably have some kind of trailer to move around larger units like the BLC 2000, the continuous wave unit, a lot of the other smaller pulsed laser cleaners have become so compact that they come in their own case and you can just put them in the back of your car so you can take your work mobile. And another cool fact is that all these units can run off portable generators, even the large continuous wave models. I'll list some links below to some generators that have worked out well for me when I've taken these laser cleaning units out to mobile jobs. So the reason I'm telling you this is that you need to keep in mind that there are some additional costs, especially if you're gonna be working with the larger BLC 2000 unit that needs a trailer. But even with that additional expense of buying an enclosed small trailer or a flatbed trailer, because of the low operating costs of the machine itself, it still works out in the end. But don't forget that you will have to find a way to transport the larger units in the end. All right, number nine, generally easy to operate. So it's just point and shoot, right? Well, not quite. Like with any new tool, you're going to need to practice and hone your skills. I like to think of laser cleaning machines like spray guns. You need to keep the laser in focus, create an even steady back and forth motion, just like you would with a spray gun. And you also need to have a good understanding of the settings to use for each type of material and each type of contaminant that you're trying to remove from the material. So most of these units don't come with a comprehensive library of settings right off the bat. You may find some basic settings in the unit, but it's not very comprehensive. Luckily, there's lots of different groups on Facebook regarding laser cleaning, and sometimes they'll share their settings with you, so you'll have some starting points. The best advice that I could give is that you will need to start to compile a comprehensive library of your own personal settings, and that's just gonna come with a lot of trial and error. One of the extra things that I like to offer when someone purchases an SFX laser cleaning unit, like the ones I'm recommending here in the video, is that I share my own personal settings with you as a new owner of an SFX laser cleaning unit. I've compiled this list of settings based off the last few years of me using it on different materials, and I like to offer it up as a good starting point for anyone looking to get into the laser cleaning industry. All right, and last but not least, let's talk about the high initial investment of buying a laser cleaning unit. So currently, right now on the market today, you can get a high quality unit like the one shown in this video, usually starting from about 10,000 all the way up to 40,000. Now, while that may seem like a lot of money, you have to consider that back in 2017, when these units first came on the market, they were going for about 75,000 to 100,000 for a quality laser cleaning unit. They were huge, they were bulky, they were very hard to transport. So the industry has really gotten actually more affordable in the last few years than it ever has been. 
So when you're choosing your next laser cleaning machine, I want you to keep these things in mind. First of all, what kind of laser do you need? Do you need a pulsed laser cleaner or do you need a continuous wave laser cleaner? Also, don't get so focused on the price. What you need to research is how long has the company been around that you're buying from? What kind of after sales support do they offer? And what is the actual build quality of the machine like? So as long as you follow those things, I think you'll be in good shape. All right, well, thank you for joining me on our journey through laser cleaning. As always, it is my goal to educate all of you on anything that has to do with laser engraving or laser cleaning technology. I enjoy this topic very much. Don't forget to leave a comment below if you have any questions about anything that we talked about. And of course, I'll list links below to all my favorite units when it comes to laser cleaning that I recommend that I have personally tried and tested and know to be good units. And with that, we'll see you around on Laser Engraving 911.